Good day. Welcome to St. John United Church of Christ as we gather to worship and to share together in a meal. Um, in a few announcements, lunch after this will be down in our fellowship hall. You may use the elevator to go down to the uh, lowest level or the front stairs here to go down um, if you can use stairs. They are working on painting in the next area over. So I would suggest for restrooms that you use the elevator and go down to the lowest level and restrooms would be um, on either side of the uh, hallways by the kitchen. And the offering today will be given to the Saturday breakfast ministry and that is, uh, will be gathered in baskets. There's one here and there's one at the table as you came in the entrance area. So that offering will be to feed the hungry through the Saturday breakfast ministry that we're so grateful for those who are keeping this going and keeping that breakfast ministry um, caring for people. And the schedule for the rest of Lent is printed in the uh, bulletin, so you know next week, uh, let's see, next Church week Brand. we will be at First United Presbyterian Church, and then the following week at Unity Baptist, and the following Wednesday at Namioki United Methodist. So uh, as we join together in our community services. Are there any announcements that need made from any of the churches? John? $143 was collected last week's offering for the Saturday Breakfast Ministry. So we will... I'm Carla. Oh. Yes, Jennifer, uh, First United Presbyterian, has strep throat, I believe someone said. So. so we will miss her, but she says antibiotics are wonders. We'll do wonders. Anyone else? Then in our invitation to worship, Cynthia Cowan has written that Lent is the season on the church calendar set aside as a time to prepare for Holy Week and Easter. It is a time to reflect on Jesus' temptations in this wilderness, his public ministry, his preparation for his death and resurrection, and the fulfillment of God's purpose in bringing about salvation. During this season, we often participate in certain Lenten disciplines for spiritual growth, fasting, giving up certain foods, adding more prayer time to our daily walk with God, studying the scriptures, extra worship like this, and specific actions for others. Lent is a time to prepare for Good Friday and Easter, for we cannot experience the risen Christ until we go to the cross of Calvary and look up at Jesus the Savior. One way to grow closer as a community is to break bread together in worship time and a meal. So let us continue our preparations in this time together. If you'll turn in your bulletins to the responsive prayer. Dear Lord, you call us to live in union with you and with one another. Jesus, you broke bread with many as you journeyed through your days here on earth. Sharing a meal helps us to be reconciled to one another in peace. Uh, remain seated as we sing the Church's One Foundation, verses 1, 2, and 5.
Our scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 19. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in the cities. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word to his disciples and said to them, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with a skin disease are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. And Jesus goes on, but what will I compare to this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man comes eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. May the Holy Spirit inspire the presentation and hearing of this reflection that we might learn to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind and our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Jesus covered a lot of territory in his public ministry. He went from here to there and around and didn't always take the most logical route. He taught and preached, he healed and he challenged in small groups and at large 5,000 gatherings, at lakeside and countryside, in villages and cities, in fancy for the day homes and in simple sick rooms, in what we might call church services and in Bible studies. Jesus did it all. Yet there were many who did not like him, many who judged him, who felt threatened by him. There were also many who wondered if he really could be the Messiah for whom they longed. Was Jesus too good to be true, or was he the real one? The real one for whom they waited. People today may ask the same questions. Just who is or was this Jesus of Nazareth, or Galilee, or Capernaum, or Bethlehem, or Jerusalem, or wherever he stayed to teach and proclaim his message as he moved about in ministry. Who is this Jesus, and what does he offer me? What does he offer me? Well, for John the Baptist, Jesus offered assurance. Assurance that John's suffering was not for naught. Assurance that Jesus was the real one, the Messiah sent by God. John had prepared the way for Jesus and had called for repentance from evil throughout his ministry. But John's message was not welcomed by all, not welcomed by many. And he was put in prison for speaking truth to power. He challenged power and he paid the price. Perhaps John knew that his death was near. Oh, he probably didn't know how, but he probably knew his death was near. And perhaps he wondered if he was giving his life for the real Messiah. Was all this worth it? What should John tell his own disciples, especially if he would soon not be with them anymore? Well, Jesus' answer was clear, even in the form of see and believe. See what I am doing. 
See how people respond to receiving what they truly need to live. Even see what my disciples and followers are doing. Jesus essentially says, yes, I am the one you knew was to come. I am the one in whom you believe. What a strong declaration of truth Jesus gave them. What a wonderful assurance it was for John. What a wonderful assurance it is for us. Yes, Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed one, the savior of the world. We are assured that his promise of life holds true for us, and we are blessed. Now, does this mean everything will always go well for us and for all believers everywhere? Probably, even possibly, or strongly, positively, not. Everything will not always go well for us and for all believers. In some times of life, powers beyond our personal control challenge us. We don't need any reminders today of the troubles we face as we walk through life. Even, even when we see the valley of the shadow of death, as John did, what we do seek or rely upon is the assurance that we follow the Savior of the world, that Jesus walked this path then and walks it with us now. Just as for John the Baptist and his disciples, this assurance comes from Jesus himself. Yes, he is the one, the true Savior, and blessed are we who believe. Therefore, in the difficult times when powers challenge us and we feel troubled, the most important truth does always go well for us. The most important always goes well for us. The all-important truth that Jesus is with us and promises life. Therefore, when we cannot quite comprehend what is happening in the world around us, when we fear that no one cares whether we are dancing or mourning, when hypocrisy changes bad to good and good to bad just because it can, we have the assurance that Jesus is the true and greatest good of all. And with that assurance, that assurance from Jesus the Messiah, we also receive life, true life, in the present and for eternity. No matter what Christian church traditions we follow or styles of worship or labels we create to identify one another, we all receive life from Jesus the Messiah. The disciples of John the Baptist, the disciples of Jesus, the apostles of the early church, and each generation of believers in Jesus the Messiah all receive the promise of life. I call it the promise rather than the hope, simply because it truly comes through the assurance that Jesus gives, the assurance of life now and everlasting. Whatever hardships we face, Jesus promises to face them with us. Whatever ministries we take on, Jesus promises to fulfill them with us. However we literally and figuratively help the blind to see, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the diseased to be healed, the poor to be cared for, and the dying and grieving to be comforted, Jesus promises to be with us. And this is life, life lived with Jesus and shared with all the world. May the wisdom of the Spirit that daily leads us on in deeds of faith bless us as we prepare again to celebrate and proclaim to all that yes, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is God's promise of life everlasting. Amen.
Jesus walked this lonesome valley. He had to walk it by himself. Oh, nobody else could walk it for him. He had to walk it by himself. Jesus prayed for his disciples. He prayed alone. Jesus died on Calvary's mountain. He died alone for you and me. Oh, nobody else could die for sinners. He had to die for you and me. Jesus rose from death's dark promise. He lives again for you and me. Oh, nobody else could bring us victory. He is alive to set us free. As we said in uh, the pre-announcements time for the uh, prayers, we will include Pastor Jennifer and all those um, struggling in many ways in our community and beyond, especially uh, where there was a uh, police officer recently killed and that small community really struggling and needing encouragement and the gift of life in the time of the valley of death. Other, uh, anyone else care to add something? Then let us be in a spirit of prayer. Lord God, walk with us on our Lenten journey, we pray. While we know the joy that is to come, help us remember that it comes only after sorrow and pain. In our mind and heart, May we walk with you in faithful discipleship that obeys your teaching. May we care for the suffering and offer comforting compassion. May we share the good news of hope and the promise of life with all who hunger and thirst. May our good intentions be more than intentions. May they be our actions our consistent way of living our faith. Hold us back from hypocrisy and from making easy or peer pressured choices that limit our discipleship. Again, may we walk boldly with you all of our days and proclaim your message of love and mercy everywhere. Bless us, we pray and unite us in the ministries we share in our community and beyond. Bless all creation and peoples and grant your peace beyond our understanding. This and all our spirit-filled prayers we bring to you, Lord God, thankful that you receive every prayer and grateful for Jesus, our Savior, who teaches us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please stand as we sing hymn 93, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. In this time of uh, prayer, we will give the table blessing and encourage you to go downstairs and eat chicken noodle soup, I believe, and sub sandwiches, and perhaps you can smell some good things that are waiting for us, and desserts, of course. And so let us uh, bless this meal. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. Thank you for filling us with your spirit and helping us to continue to walk in faith through our Lenten journey and all our days. We know that to walk, we need spiritual food and we need physical food. And we thank you for the hands which have prepared this meal, for each one who has helped to make it possible, and for each of us as we are nourished and go out to serve as faithful disciples. Bless us all, we pray. And now, as we go, we go in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>